All right, this is Abomination, chap, part six. Uh, we left off in John 19, verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be filled, saith, I thirst. Uh, this is John chapter 19, verse 28, verse 29. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. Guess what? It's Passover. The Lamb of God. He said, It is finished. The ultimate sacrifice. It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day. Now, this is not necessarily a Friday night, Saturday Sabbath day. It could have been, uh, well, it was Passover. Passover was considered a Sabbath day. Uh, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water water for a baptism and blood the blood sacrifice people by his blood we are saved and now romans chapter 5 comes to mind romans chapter 5 verse 7 for scarcely for a righteous man will one die peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. All right, let's go back to John 19, verse 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced aside, forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled a bone of him shall not be broken and that was a messianic promise and again another scripture saith they shall look on him whom they pierced so all right let's keep going all right, let's go to Luke chapter 23. Uh, let's see. Verse 20. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus. See, Pilate wanted to release Jesus, but the priests, nope, they're not going to allow that to happen. No, 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 no. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, speak, spake again to them, but they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. But he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests, these are not Catholic priests, and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. 
And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, there laid hold a, upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Now, you can say part of this was fulfilled in the destruction of the uh, 70 AD with the destruction of Jerusalem. However, verse 30, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Mount say, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. Ah, so where do we find this? Let's take a look. Another reference to this. All right, let's take a look at Hosea chapter 10, verse 1. Israel is an empty vine. What does that mean? It means she had no fruit on the vine. That's what it means. No fruit. No good fruit. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself according to the multitude of his fruit. He hath increased the altars, not good altars, bad altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now, what? For now, they shall say, We have no king because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? They have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. What's hemlock? Poison, people. Poison. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth Haven. For the people thereof shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it for the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. It shall be also carried unto Assyria as a present to King Jerob. Uh, see, northern Israel was carried off to Assyria. Uh, Judah was carried off to Babylon. Different people, different land areas, different judgments. Uh, Ephraim shall receive shame, and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. As for Samaria, which was the uh, Samaria was the capital of of Israel, Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. Verse eight: The high places of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn. And the thistle shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, and they shall say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. You see, they're going to be they're going to be so ashamed and afraid of the Assyrian of the Assyrians coming into the land that they're going to want the mountains and the hills to, to fall on them and cover them, to hide them. Verse 9. O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeah, where they stood. The battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them, and the people shall be gathered against them. Uh, when... They shall bind themselves in their two furrows. And Ephraim is an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. But I passed over her fair neck. I will make Ephraim the ride. Judah shall plow. And Jacob 
shall break his clods. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, it, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men, therefore shall a tumult arise among thy people, and all the fortresses shall be spoiled, as Shalman spoiled Beth Harbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. So shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. In a morning shall the king of Israel be utterly cut off. All right. Revelation chapter 6, verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, there's people that will tell you that Revelation was in time past. They'll tell you all this stuff has happened in time past. Revelation's already been fulfilled. Uh... When were the mountains and islands moved out of their places? Uh, never. If there's still mountains and if there's still islands, well, then this hasn't been fulfilled yet. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. You know, all the rich so-called elite. You know they're building themselves underground bunkers? Oh, yeah. Hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand? And the answer is, none of them. You know what? In verse 13, before the heaven departs as a scroll, it says, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Have the stars of heaven fallen under the earth? No, no, no. It hasn't happened yet. So, Revelation chapter, you know, the book of Revelation, part of Revelation was present tense when John was writing it. Part of it is past, and part of it is future. Anybody that tells you it's all future is wrong, Everybody tells you that it's all past is wrong or present. No, part of it's past, part of it was present, part of it is for the future. And it, you know, personally, I think it was written after the fall of Jerusalem, but that's just my opinion. So what can I tell you? All right, let's close this out. Um, oh. We're going to go back to Luke chapter 23 after I uh, finish this. All blessings and praise and honor to Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.